We're less than 12 hours from Michigan Notre Dame under the lights in Ann Arbor, the big house tonight. Want to give you guys the opportunity to win 25 bucks. Go ahead and predict the score. Michigan versus Notre Dame tonight in Ann Arbor. A lot of rain coming, so maybe make your uh, predictions appropriately based on the rain. First one to predict the score correctly, and of course, tell me who wins. You can get $25 from my pocket to yours. We've got a great Michigan football report coming up right now. Welcome back to the Michigan Football Report. I am your host, James Yoder. I'm in Ann Arbor today, folks. If you want to, to get a up close and personal look at the turnover chain, you slide into my DMs on any of the internet, social network, Twitter, Instagram, wherever, uh, and maybe you can meet up with me to watch some games before Michigan Notre Dame. But some news dropped Friday uh, after we recorded our Friday show that Michigan has dropped UCLA from the 2022 and 2023 schedules. That seems like far off, but that's only a couple seasons away here, folks. Uh, 2020, 2021, boom, 2022, I'll be out there. So Michigan drops a home and home with UCLA and has actually replaced them, as we see here in the 2022 schedule, with Hawaii. So Michigan will start the year with Colorado State, Hawaii, still have an open date on September 17th in 2022. Then you go on to 2023, add East Carolina, the uh, the fighting Skip Holtz. Is he still the coach there? Probably not. But uh, nevertheless, East Carolina will start the year Labor Day weekend. They've got an open date on September 9th, and then hosting Bowling Green on September 16th. There has been some speculation out there that this was a move to allow Michigan to get Notre Dame back on the schedule in the out-of-conference. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case, although who knows, that could be proven wrong because Notre Dame in those years has Clemson and Ohio State on their schedule, both 22 and 2023. So I don't think they want to add Michigan to an already daunting slate. But those are the schedules off out-of-conference 22 and 23. Let's take a look at the next two seasons just so you know what Michigan's looking like outside of the nine-game Big Ten slate next year, 2020. Open up on the road against Washington that could have a potential first-round quarterback in Jacob Eason returning. Uh, this is the team that's been to the playoff in the last four seasons, so certainly a game that Michigan will probably be an underdog in uh, to start the season will be the fourth time Michigan has started away from Big Ten, away from the Big House in Jim Harbaugh's six seasons. You know, assuming he's the coach next year, four, four out of six seasons they've started away from the Big House um, to start the year against a Power Five team. Three of those four ranked teams, and the other one was Utah, his first season, which became ranked the week after that they beat Michigan. So Michigan's not putting themselves in a lot of uh, easy positions to start seasons. Let's take a look, though, at 2021. Western Michigan, to start the year, you've got a little bit of a uh, you know, warm-up game in some regards, and then go on, you know, then, I'm sorry, then host Washington the second week on September 11th, then Northern Illinois. So a little bit easier a slate, three straight home games in the out-of-conference in 2021. Let's get into some Michigan football report questions on game day. These came through uh, on our YouTube, and, and one of them we'll talk about here in a second on my Twitter account. So these are questions from the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Nick Holtz, friend of the program, says, I don't think anyone is ready for the off, you know, and the offense is, is NFL ready. Talk specifically here, as you see in the screen, about the receivers and the drop passes. There's been a lot of speculation that Nico Collins, Tariq Black, Diamond Peoples-Jones all have their eyes on the NFL after this year. But as you'll see here in the statistics, both from Penn State and if you look at the stats from the entire season, I don't think Michigan's got the production from the wide receiver crew this season. And even last season, to be honest, I know there was uh, some nice plays made by the wide receivers, Peoples-Jones and Collins in particular last year. But the NFL wants to see production, and though CBS and uh, another um, uh, mock draft recently have put, I think it was Adam Schefter's, have put Peoples-Jones and Collins as first-round draft picks next year, I don't think that's going to be the case personally. I think these guys would be lucky to be second or third rounders, lucky to be second or third or third rounders if they came out after the 2019 season. Also some speculation out there. I'm not going to put someone's name on it, but... The most underperforming of Michigan's uh, three 2017 recruit wide receivers uh, from that group. That could he transfer, do a grad transfer after this year, still play one or two seasons elsewhere? I don't have any inside information on that, but I wouldn't be the first. There's a lot of speculation out there that if one of the guys doesn't go pro, that maybe there'd be a grad transfer opportunity because 
uh, some unhappiness to the program. So a lot of people saying that they're, the mission is going to be starting from scratch, maybe with Ronnie Bell you know, uh, being the lead guy. And in some ways, I guess he is the lead guy, although unexpected this season. But is anyone from Michigan's offense ready for the NFL? I haven't seen it yet. Some things look good in the second half against Penn State. I don't think Shea Patterson will be drafted in the first five rounds. I certainly don't think Cesar Ruiz or, uh, is going to come out early. Ben Bredesen, maybe Lil John Runyon could get drafted in the first four rounds or something like that. But the entire offense wholeheartedly has underperformed this year. And if Nico Collins, down in People's Jones, or Tariq Black come out a year early, and in Tariq's case, he could apply for redshirt two years early, I think they're going to be very disappointed on where they end up getting selected. Guys, you got a few hours, depending on when you're watching this, you got as many as nine or ten hours to bet on Michigan Notre Dame game tonight. Do it with BetDSI, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code GOBLUE gets you a 120% deposit bonus. So let me make it simple. You put in a 50 spot, you get an extra 60. 100, an extra 120. Go up to 500 bucks, get an extra $600 in your BetDSI account to bet on college football all day today. Go over to the NFL tomorrow and NBA season, World Series. A lot of ways to make sports more fun. Do it with BetDSI. Put some money down with promo code GOBLUE. Now let's get into a question from Twitter. Five-star duds. Uh... One of my favorite people to follow on Twitter, and despite uh, what Webster will tell you, this is not my burner account, nor is it the, the huge radio show's burner account. This is just a, uh, a red-blooded Michigan football fan who's passionate about his team. And he says, I guarantee Jane, at James Yoder makes serious money for Michigan football, something the haters and losers don't give him credit for. And, you know... The production staff uh, of Chat Sports put this up there. I go into these questions completely blind. So this is raw, unedited Yoder. I don't know what's coming up on the screen, but good question uh, from there. I teased at the beginning because they said, hey, we got one you're really going to like there from Twitter. And this is from, uh, I like his change his name, but Jimbo Fishbaugh. I think it's a combination of Jimbo Fisher and Jim Harbaugh. Uh, but nevertheless, look, I took a two month uh, break from the show in January and, and February. And the amount of stories and the amount of interest in Michigan football plummeted off a cliff. Sales of jerseys and, and hats way down, interest in the program way down. And until I made my big comeback in April with the show back on Twitter, then all of a sudden Michigan's back in the news. Spring practice, trips overseas. So a lot of validity here. I'm not going to say it's tens of millions. But people have been saying that lately, that I that I am the vo- not only the voice of Michigan football, but one of the biggest, biggest commerce drivers of the Michigan football program staying relevant, even when they're losing multiple games before the end of October, potentially three on the field. So a little sarcasm there, guys. Settle down, settle down. But I thought it was a pretty funny question. I want to ask, though, based on his question there, based on his Twitter comment there, do you enjoy this show? Give us a scale of 1 to 10. We've hooked up with the national NPS company, Net Promoter Score. They asked us to ask you guys, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you enjoy the show? 1 being the worst, 10 being you liked it. Uh, We'd certainly appreciate any feedback if you give us less than a 9 or a 10. What can we improve on? So go ahead and rate the show. If you enjoy it, uh, I guess if you don't enjoy it, rate it low. If you do, rate it high. But we'll talk about it uh, potentially next week on what you guys' score was on this football program. Let's take it to our next question from DAS. It says, Michigan fans are foolish to want Harbaugh gone. This guy has been in football his entire life, and he loves Michigan. Five years in Ann Arbor, 82 to 86. Then goes to the NFL as a quarterback, 87 season to, I think like 2000, actually. He was actually on the Chargers. Goes to the Raiders in 2001, and then in 2004 gets his, 2003 or 2004, whatever it was, uh, four, yeah, four, five, six, yeah, 2004 gets his first head coaching job, University of San Diego, 29-6 record, Stanford we all know about, beat, you know, went on the road and beat number one USC in his first season, the 49ers, three straight NFC title games, and a Super Bowl appearance, and then at Michigan, has been on the cusp, two of the last three seasons has gone into the final game of the year against Ohio State in the top four, basically you win and you're in the playoff as long as you take care of business in the Big Ten Championship game, but has not got it done in any of those spots. Is kind of the bridesmaid, never the bride for Jim Harbaugh, but his record is certainly better than what his predecessors, Brady Hoke and Rich Rodriguez have done, and he's trending along the winning percentage of Lloyd Carr, Gary Moeller, not hitting the highs of Bo Schembechler, but the downside to Harbaugh, I think, right now is is you're not winning the games against Ohio State, which Lloyd Carr did very well, especially in the early part of his career. I guess only in the early part of his career. Got off to a hot start, 
with three straight wins against the Buckeyes, a Buckeye team that was in the top five every single year that you beat him. And he's fallen into the bow trap of losing his bowl games after the big win in 2015 against Florida, three straight bowl losses. So I think there's some validity that Michigan fans are, uh, are foolish for wanting Harbaugh gone if you don't get the right guy, but you can't just accept four or five potentially straight losses to Ohio State and losing your bowl game every year and not expect people to uh, to get a little bit of antsy there with their head football coach. Guys, if you're betting on college football games today, if you're betting on the NFL, get an advantage, take the money from the sports books and do it with a discount if you get going with the Action Network. I use it so much, they reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to give your audience the opportunity to use the Action Network for cheaper than what you're paying, James? I'm paying 10 bucks a month. You guys can get it for $5.99 a month, 40% off, chatsports.com slash deal. The Action Network app gives you all the insights you need to know to make bets, plus tells you where the public and the big time whales, guys like me putting 100K per game on my bet, where that money is going. So you have the best, uh, I guess, information you need to when you're going to put money on sporting events. NFL, college football, NBA, the World Series, get an advantage using the Action Network app at Action Network app, chatsports.com slash deal will get you that 40% off. Next question coming up from Bill Kemp. I found it interesting that Harbaugh admitted today in the radio, and this is coming from a couple days ago, so this is midweek, that Patterson was indeed playing injured for the first two games of the year. I believe Yoder had it first. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing it, Bill Kemp, because Webster and and, and all the guys from Rivals and MGo Blah, they're all telling you, Yoda's making stuff up when he says Shay's her until Jim Harbaugh gives them their marching orders and they're allowed to actually uh, to, to report on it. So uh, I told you Shay was hurt after the first game. I told you exactly what the injury was. I have a source inside the Patterson uh, uh, inner circle on that one. And as such, Jim Harbaugh's finally admitting it uh, months later. Joel Klatt apparently had said it too. But um, yeah, Shea was playing hurt, and even though his his uh, receivers let him down in the first half with six drops, four by DPJ alone, um, I think that Shea Patterson finally played with some confidence and was the guy I thought we'd see all this year, and in some ways last year when when the uh, the offensive philosophy was a little more vanilla than they've been so far in 2019, at least from a passing perspective, but. We're going to see what happens with Shea Patterson on Saturday night, tonight, against Notre Dame. If it's the same Shea from the second half, if he's rolling out of the pocket with confidence, if he's pulling the ball back on some of those read options and keeping it like he hasn't done much this year, then I'm excited if they get a win about the last four games of the season. If it's more of the, uh, you know, drops and fumbles and not moving the ball along, then I think Michigan's looking at as many as three more losses, including Saturday night, uh, tonight against at Notre Dame. So we'll see what shade we get, but thanks Bill Kemp for giving me credit that the blog boys, the guys that don't, they, they just wish I didn't exist because I'm taking so many of their audience away. They never give me credit for anything and just can't wait to, for me to get something wrong, which you know, we know never, never happens. So they can tell you how much of a bum I am, but you guys watching the show know the truth. Thanks so much for the question, Bill. Jay Zachary coming in. Okay. This was commented on our post-game show Saturday. We, we had a terrific Tom Yoder on as the co-host, and we're taking questions live on the air, people talking about whether or not the bowl game matters at the end of the year. And people are going to say, oh, they're not in the playoffs. What does it matter? It doesn't matter at all. And I actually wholeheartedly disagree with that. And I was mad when Michigan football players, especially two captains, took off, uh, you know, didn't play in the, in the bowl game last year, Rashawn Gary, Karan Higdon, Devin Bush, and whether they admit it or not, Jawan Bush or Beatty. But Harbaugh put an emphasis in winning that bowl game his first year to get to 10 wins and not have a four-loss uh, season right out of the gate. But since then, it's been three straight losses, two of them being New Year's Six bowl games. And look, folks, 11-2 and two sounds and feels and looks a lot better than 10-3, and three, frankly. Imagine the narrative on Jim Harbaugh if they lose the bowl game in year one, so they go nine and four instead, and then 11 and two 2016, nine, eight and five, nine and four in a down year in 17, and then come back and, uh, and you're 11 and two in 2018. You've got two 11 win years. People aren't saying, oh, Harbaugh loses three games every year. I was you know, meeting with some friends before the Texas-Oklahoma games a few, a, a few weeks back, and they were like, 
Harbaugh's lost three games every year? No fucking way. That's crazy. And they couldn't believe it because they're like, I, I swear you guys were like in the top five you know, in, in November. How do you lose three games? Well, Michigan's on a two-game losing streak the last three seasons. So I think they really matter. Perception of the program going into the offseason, perception for big games. Uh, and, and I know some people just say, oh, it's an exhibition game. It doesn't count if it's not the playoffs. But if you're going to put the uniform on, if you're going to take the trip, Try and win the game and win the game. It counts towards your record. It counts towards the amount of losses you have. So I wholeheartedly disagree with Jay that bowl games don't count anymore. I think that if you're going to play them, win them. And if you don't want to put, you know, have all your players play, if you're not going to, you know, approach it like it's a real game, then just decline it, right? The university doesn't make that much money off of the bowl games. It goes into the Big Ten pool. Rutgers get just as much money uh, from the bowl game as Michigan does, minus expenses. Uh, so there's really no advantage other than you get the 15 practices or something like that. So if you're not going to practice to win games, don't practice. But the question here, do you care about Michigan's bowl games? Uh, I, I was at the uh, Clemson Notre Dame game last year, and I watched the Michigan game from uh, my you know, second half from my phone. About puked in my car three times, uh, not because I was driving and watching. My wife was driving, but at the lack of effort and lack of preparation from the team and the coaching staff. So I care about Michigan bowl games. I was bummed when they lost all three of those. I don't know if you guys type Y for yes. Type N for no. Keep it rolling. Anthony Kimmerly. Question, James. Does a long shot win against, I like this, Anthony, TTIO, that team in Ohio, kind of a spin on that team up north, uh, this season alter the fan base's view of Jim Harbaugh? I mean, it has to, right? I was the first one to say when, when Urban Meyer stepped away and Ryan Day took the job that Michigan's going to win next year, and then it's off to the races from there against Ohio State. But this Ohio State team potentially is the best team in the country. Could You know, you could get a Larry Coker style where uh, Ryan Day starts off his career with a loaded team and wins a national title his first year. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And where does that put Jim Harbaugh? 0-5 versus Ohio State, and they'll be number one to start the year next year. You could be looking at 0-6 uh, and beyond. So it would definitely change my perception. You couple that with a Notre Dame win tonight. You couple that with a Michigan State win at home in three weeks. Then you've got a 10-2 regular season, a win versus your big three rivals, which I don't think, I'm trying to remember, I don't think that's happened since 2003 where you beat Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State in the same season. So I think it would completely alter the fan base's view and have a lot of optimism towards the future. But I'll ask you guys this question. Does Michigan have a chance, any chance, not even say are they going to win the game? This is, you know, are they going to win the game? Do they have a chance of winning the game, right? Type go blue if they've got a chance. And maybe uh, give an early score prediction. We're still five, six weeks away from the game. Uh, five, six, five, six, whatever it is, away from the game. Or give a ha if no. I think Michigan has no chance against the juggernaut 2019 Ryan Day Buckeye team. Give me a ha below in the comments. Question coming up here from Micah Wilson. The game versus Penn State was the best game that Shea Patterson played. I liked what I saw from him. If you've been watching the channel all week, folks, you watched our live 90-minute post-game show late Saturday night. You'll see that I agree with uh, with Micah, uh, Mika or Micah. It's Micah, but I think it's Mika sounds funny because of the, uh, the the we joke about the Donald Trump tweet about was it Mika, Micah, Mika Brzezinkis, whatever her name is. But regardless, you guys don't need to know about that. But when I see the name, I always think of uh, of that tweet. So 24-41, um, 276, almost broke that 300 uh, barrier that Michigan hasn't done in, in, in over three years now. Uh, no touchdowns for Shea, but got in the end zone on that fourth down uh, where he got his eyes gouged out. But the stats don't blow you out of the water. But my eyes tell me Shea Patterson finally was comfortable in the offense. And if it wasn't for the six drops in the first half and the Ronnie Bell one in the second half, which could have, you know, that, you know, that's seven. Uh, there could have been more that I just I stopped keeping count after six, really. And I remember the Ronnie Bell one. You've got the phantom offensive pass interference against Nico Collins on a really deep play. If you catch half of those drops and the phantom pass interference on Nico, Shea Stats all of a sudden looked like something like 28 of 37 for you know, with a couple touchdowns and 350 yards. So I thought Shea, what Shea did on Saturday against Penn State was great. If it continues tonight against Notre Dame, you are looking at a potential big-time momentum shift in the future of this program and the future job prospects of one Josh Gaddis. All right, guys, if you missed our show yesterday, we've got our Michigan football rumors and analysis of the michigan Notre Dame game, and I've got my show, my favorite show from last week. If you haven't also, make sure to subscribe to the channel before game time. Never miss an episode of the Michigan Football Report. Keep an eye out for the turnover chain today. It's in Ann Arbor. Go Blue.
No turnover chain. 